So the original on-aired pilot script for Game of Thrones was recently found. You know, the one that certain actors are embarrassed to ever see the light of day, and some of the changes are... intriguing to say the least. So here's some backstory for this on-aired pilot script. In 2010, showrunners D&D test screened their original Game of Thrones pilot to their friends, and it was called a piece of shit, among other things. I guess it was just absolutely horrible. Kit Harrington has even touched on the on-aired pilot, saying in an interview, They made a lot of mistakes. It didn't look right. Didn't feel right. Had nothing different about it. It was so bad, they reshot the pilot, and that's the one we all eventually saw. Which you're thinking should be the end of it. However, Bill Bradley of Huffington Post did us all a spectacular favor by going to the Texas A&M Cushing Memorial Library in College Station to search through George R.R. R. Martin's collection there. God bless him for even going to the wasteland that is Texas. So in George's collection, that takes up multiple walls, by the way, he found the production draft of that initial on-aired Game of Thrones pilot. Interestingly, Bill says this pilot script varies from an early version of the pilot script that allegedly surfaced online years ago, but was never confirmed to be real. As scripts go through a lot of rewrites, they both could be real, so I don't want to call the one from years ago fake. But this new pilot script that Bill found is dated October 22nd, 2009, that is around the time the on-aired first pilot started filming, and it credits the pilot's original director. That, among other found evidence, suggests this is the real deal for the on-aired pilot, or at least the most accurate script for it. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's go over the five biggest differences between the unaired Game of Thrones pilot script and the aired pilot script. There would be more than five, but Bill hasn't posted the rest of the script online yet. Post it all, Bill. We need it. All right, number one, Cersei burn the feather. In season one, we see Robert lay a feather from an exotic tropical bird on Lyanna's statue's hand in the crypts of Winterfell. Sansa, seasons later, picks this feather up because, according to the showrunners, there were no janitorial crews in the crypts post-Winterfell being taken, so it would still be there. And she puts it back on her aunt's statue while Littlefinger creeps on her, per usual. Lastly, we saw the feather in the Crips promo for season 8, where it falls to the ground as Jon walks by his biological mom's statue, and her voice says, Promise me, Ned. In that promo, we also see the feather freeze over. So in the on-aired pilot script, Cersei was to visit the Crips of Winterfell before the feast, but after Robert and Ned's visit to Lyanna's resting place. We were to see the crypt, and then Cersei exiting, walking into a small room between the kitchen and Great Hall, where her handmaiden straightened out her outfit and took off her heavy furs. Before she leaves them, she pulls the feather out of her sleeve and tells them to burn it. I'm not sure her actually burning the feather would be that big of a deal, but I'm glad they kept it out anyways. Seems like a waste of time except to maybe show us how petty she is. Though to be fair, if my husband was still visiting the grave of his dead betrothed, I might be a little insecure too. Speaking of the Winterfell visit, and I'm still counting this as number one because I always cheat on these things. You know it, just accept it. John got super drunk like in the book in this on-aired pilot. We know in the aired pilot, John is outside and meets Benjen and isn't absolutely shit-faced, but still as emo as ever. I would have loved to see Benjen and John just getting blasted together. Oh, and also at the feast in the on-aired pilot, Jamie and Ned's dialogue actually continues further than what we saw. So we saw their conversation end here. I don't fight in tournaments. I just want to fight a man for real. I don't want him to know what I can do. Well said. But in the on-aired pilot, Jamie pushes Ned harder and talks about Ned's dead father and brother. Since Ned and Jamie have always been the best of friends, their conversation is filled with as much acid as you think it would be. Tyrion, after Ned leaves, tells Jamie, If it came down to it, brother, I'd bet on you. But I wouldn't bet much. Classic Tyrion sass. I'd imagine they took out this extra bit of the conversation in the pilot we actually saw because it weighed down the scene too much. 
Lastly, on number one, this still counts, don't take this from me. We got the training session between the Starks and Lannisters, and it plays out close to how it did in the book. Joffrey wanted to use live steel, Roderick says, hell no, and Joffrey walks off with Tommen. Basically just a bit of dialogue change, but very, very similar to the book. I don't think we lost much with this scene, honestly. It was easy to tell Joffrey is a twat with the wailing of women scene. Boy means nothing to me. Stand the wailing of women. One word and I hit you again. I'm telling mother. Oh. All right, let's move on to number two. The White Walkers talked. Now this is something I've seen some intense debates on on my channel about. Some people want the others to talk while some said if they do, they will hunt d and down. Of course, in the books, we know they have their own language described by Will as a voice like the cracking of ice on a winter lake and voices and laughter as sharp as icicles. This translated well in the books, but maybe not so much in the show. Whatever side you take on having the others talk, in the original on-aired pilot, they actually did talk, but in their own language. So in the on-aired pilot, Will, from his position up in a tree, was supposed to hear the crackling from multiple sources. Noises that weren't from a mindless predator, but an actual language. And as he stayed in the tree, he would hear the icy voices talk beneath him. Personally, I thought we actually heard a White Walker talk in the pilot we saw, but I guess originally there was supposed to be a lot more and there was going to be a lot more conversation in their language. If you're wondering what the White Walkers language is called, David Peterson, the creator of languages we hear on the show, such as Dothraki, named it Scroth. And Bill shared a previously unpublished interview he had with David. In the interview, David talked about the White Walker language, sharing, I came up with basically some dialogue. I recorded it, and then I suggested to them, here's how you might modify it digitally to give it a unique sound, like, the cracking of ice on a winter lake. It didn't get used for the pilot, and then there was discussion they were thinking about using it in season two. They said they tried it, and it just wasn't working out, so they abandoned the idea. Oh, and here's what he created pre-effects. Yeah, kinda glad they went with not talking, though I'm sure post-effects it would have been a lot better. But let's move on to number three, which is something I actually complained about years ago in, I think, one of my first Game of Thrones videos. Don't go watch it. In the unaired pilot, Catelyn, like her book counterpart, encouraged Ned to go to King's Landing instead of in the pilot we got, where she begged and cried like a little fucking bitch. So during the bedroom scene in the unaired pilot, which by the way was with a different actress for Catelyn, we see this new dialogue. Catelyn urges Ned to accept both of Robert's offers becoming the Hand, and to betroth Sansa to Joffrey. Ned tells her, I'll refuse him. I'm a Northman. I belong here. Not down south in that rat's nest they call a capital. But Catelyn responded, he would make our daughter queen. Ned then asks her if that's what she wants of her, a pretty crown to wear then. However, Maester Lewin walks in with the note from Catelyn's sister Lysa, which by the way, the note says that Cersei killed Jon Arryn. Now compare that to the pilot we got. Do it. I really can't. You can't. You must. Yeah, I like the Catelyn in the unaired pilot better, but whatever, what is done is done. I guess they just wanted her to appear less power hungry in the show, so that's why they made the changes. All right, number four, Jamie and Cersei's pilot sex was originally a lot more rapey. So we know there were a lot of upset people over the sex scene between Jamie and Cersei that was actually rape next to Joffrey's dead body. However, there was originally going to be a rape scene between Jamie and Cersei in the pilot. So the unaired pilot matched the book more closely with Cersei telling him to stop repeatedly and Jamie not stopping. As we know in the aired pilot, it was very consensual sex and both of them were really into it. According to Bill, this change was probably done to make Jamie appear more controlled by Cersei and making his leaving her a bigger moment. Because I guess everyone forgot about this scene. It's not, it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. I don't care. 
Lastly, number five, and I guess continuing on with sex scenes, in the unaired original pilot, Drogo and Danny's wedding night was going to be more like the book instead of the rape we got in the actual pilot. I, I don't know why they changed this around. In the unaired pilot, Danny was supposed to discover, just like in the book, that Drogo only says no in her language. They would have a bit of foreplay, and finally Drogo would pull a flush Danny in his lap and ask, no? To which Danny would move his hand between her thighs and say, yes. Why did they change that to this? I'm sure there's an interview somewhere where D&D talk about how brilliant they are for doing it that way. I mean, if they would have made the first night consensual, they could have still had her give this speech in season seven. I have been sold like a brood mare. I've been shamed and betrayed, raped and defiled. Oh, hey, I'm gonna give you a bonus. I can never just do five, I'm so sorry. This line that Jamie says in the show, The king shits and the hand wipes. Ned got to say in the on-aired pilot. So, that's neat. Now, if we ever want to see this disaster of a pilot, apparently we just need to get Kit to piss off the showrunners because according to him, hardly anyone has seen the pilot, but the showrunners have a copy that they threaten Kit with occasionally. Kit revealed in an interview, they say if I ever piss them off too much, they'll release it on YouTube. Every now and then, they send me a screen grab, just as a threat. Quick, someone do terrible things towards D&D and make it look like it was Kit. I need to see this terrible on-aired pilot. So what you can take from this is the original on-aired pilot was a lot more like the book, but then they had to make changes because it wasn't flowing quite right. I'd be interested to know what things in the on-aired pilot was better than the aired pilot and vice versa, or at least to you. Like, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section down below.